Why should, should your business use Salesforce CPQ? Simple reasons. It boosts your sales representative's productivity. It automates renewals, which is a very important aspect. Uh, the, it provides accurate pricing. Uh, it increases win rates. Um, of course, because you're going to like provide the quotations faster and in a beautiful way with without much errors. So uh, people are going to rely on to you uh, way more than the others, right? And if others are taking 10 days or something like that in order to even just provide a quote, uh, no one wants to wait that much, right? They want the implementation and everything to be done in just 10 days. So, so yeah, that's going to increase your chances of uh, close loss, close win, not loss. Streamline uh, the code to cash process uh, and it reduces sales cycle light, cycle time. As I said, it, it improves customers' experience. They're just, they're just wowed uh, about it. It generates accurate codes. Then comes features of Salesforce CPQ. I think this is exactly where I'll be looping in Vishwajit, but after a certain while. Uh, but, but can we just show Vishwajit's face? He's beautiful. <laughs> All right, uh, and he was always laughing. That's, uh, that's something that nobody can deny. Product rules. It defines yeah. All right. Product rules. Uh, it defines uh, It defines the conditions under which products can be included in the code. So what all that means is whether this particular product is compatible with this particular product or not. Whether this particular product uh, can go alone or it requires other accessories or peripherals to go along with it. It cannot be sold as a sole product. All of these things need a lot of configuration, and where we do all of those configurations is in the product rules. Right, that's what it is. Then comes price rules. Price rules typically help you uh, calculate the discounts, apply the uh, pricing based on the customer profiles or, uh, or or the sales agreements that you have had with the, uh, that customer. And without it, uh, your pricing cannot actually go right, right? And you do not want your sales executives to look into what was the contract that we had with this client or what kind of a customer this is, uh, what kind of a customer this, uh, this is and uh, what kind of, uh, pricing should be given to this and uh, there's a lot of chance of error whenever they have to figure out what to do but when the system is helping them do all of that and just uh, trying to put information without them even worrying about it it just makes the life easier so now, now let's uh, make us understand Vishwajit what exactly is the difference between product rule and the price rule so in the product rule as we can see we have hide and show products so basically we can show and hide like we can hide the products which are incompatible and we can show the product which are compatible with it. So we can do that. We can add or remove products. So basically, let's say if you are adding a particular product and we want, and there is a requirement like a maintenance kit needs to be sold with it. We can definitely do that. Then we have validation rules. Validation rules kind of ensure like a certain product cannot be sold with a particular configuration. We can do that. So like if a particular product is being sold, it cannot be sold with some different product. So that is something that's possible. Then we have alert messages. Notifying like it is not the best practice to sell this particular product or it's not a best practice to sell these many quantities with this particular product when you are only selling three laptops, you should not be selling, you know, six uh, mouse or six keyboards like that does not make sense. So those kind of alerts can be created. Then we have dynamic product filters. So basically when we are kind of choosing the products, it kind of filters the, you know, features, filters the other products that can go with it. So we can do that. Then we have price rules. Price rules kind of, you know, go around the quantity and the pricing itself only it can override the quantity so let's say if a particular product is being sold and with that particular product there needs to be product which needs to be sell twice the quantity so let's say if uh, if somebody is buying let's say a laptop and in that laptop itself only we are going to sell them a complete uh, keyboard kit okay so we can integrate like if they are buying three laptops they should be getting six six of those keyboard kits so we can do that with those configuration we can override the price as well. Then they can be used for discounting as you said it. And then we can use summary variables to show specific value on the Qt. So like, what's that? So let's say if we are selling multiple products and we are selling hardware products as well and uh, software products as well. So we can get a sum of how much worth of software we are selling to this particular customer, how much worth of hardware products we are selling to this particular customer. We can get a sum on the Qt itself only which kind of helps the sales representative understand, okay, how much of software we are selling to this particular customer, how much software we are selling to this particular customer. So we can do that with price rules. All right, uh, let's talk about discount schedules now. Uh, what exactly is this? So discount schedules is a way of, you know, uh, defining the discounts on a particular products. So discount schedules allows us to define discounts to give mm -hmm. you a uh, simple example. So let's say if somebody is purchasing 
you know, 15 to 15 orders. We can define a rule like if somebody is purchasing 10 to 19 products, that particular person should get a discount of 5%. And if somebody is purchasing, uh, you know, products or in the quantity of 22, then we can define like from 21 quantity to 20, 30 quantity, they should get a discount of 9%. So we can do that with discount schedules. Then we have plugins. Plugins are CPQ capabilities, which allows, you know, the capability to do, uh, you know, add-ons onto the CPQ itself only. When I say, you know, add-ons, basically what they can do is they can simply extend the capability that Salesforce CPQ provides out of the box and it can extend it. When I say extend it, you can, you know, uh, integrate different platforms, customize, you know, even more the how the Qt, uh, Qt line editor works, how the calculation are being performed, how to store the document, how to, you know, integrate electronic, you know, signatures as well. So we can do that with plugins. Uh, here's an example. Yeah. So here's a you know simple uh, view of how discount schedule uh, editor looks like. So uh, if we can look at the next slide, in that we can see like you know we can define like first first level, second level, third level, and we can define the discount like ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent in that. Uh, moving on to the next pricing methods. Yes. Uh, what that means is, uh, I mean, you have di diverse pricings. In the case you have diverse pricings, like let's say list pricings, uh, list price. Uh, block prices, uh, cost prices. So what that means is, uh, I mean, you can implement di uh, different different pricing methods with whatever suits your business, right? So let's talk about list pricing. So whenever you choose list pricing, there's a prices that you, that you've created and you want the, uh, the 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 prices to be picked from there. But uh, when you when you've uh, when you've chosen uh, block pricing, what that means is that if the quantity stands from zero to ten, this is going to be the cost. But if the quantity stands from ten to fifty, this, the cost is going to be that. That. But if the quantity is from fifty to hundred, uh, the cost is going to be this. So this is something uh, called as block pricing. But when we say cost pricing, what that means is that you have a cost. You you just have the list of the cost, and you add markup on top of that. Right. Let's say uh, you want to add eighteen percent markup onto whatever your cost was. So in that case, you just like pick the uh, pick the cost price and then you, then you just add some markups whatever like i mean whatever kind of uh, whatever is the way you 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 price uh, uh, or you set the prices for the products that you're trying to sell is, uh, is 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 all possible in here with the help of different pricing methods that it offers so that's what it is then comes our advanced approval processes. Uh, what that means is that in a lot of uh, a lot of time, a lot of time in uh, of the sales executives goes into getting the quotations approved by their sales leads, by their sales managers, or uh, sometimes even from the uh, e even from the uh, I mean the people from the management, right, or, or from the leadership. So all of that can be automated with the help of Salesforce CPQ. Let me show you how with the help of a flow diagram. Uh, so over here. In the case of different products, there there can be different discount ranges uh, ranges based on which uh, you can direct it to different kind of people. Uh, so, like let's say if the discount uh, range is up to five hundred dollars and around five to ten percentages, any of it or both of it probably, whichever way you want to set it, you can set it that way. Uh, the approval should go to the senior sales rep, right? Uh, but if it is more than that and less than a thousand dollars or probably uh, ten to fifteen percent, then it should go to senior sales rep, right? That's a uh, different senior sales rep. Uh, but if it is more than that, it can go to a, a different senior sales rep, or it can it can even go to uh, some some manager or some uh, leader uh, person into the re leadership role. So you can set all of these advanced approval process also. It's not similar to the regular approval process that you get in. Uh, in Salesforce, right? It's it's uh, that they, they are different. These are specifically made for the for getting the quotations approved from the uh, people working into your organization based on different different uh, criteria and uh, yeah schedules. So just to add on to more to it, like you know, so advanced approval process also supports the capability to do parallel approval. So like as you were saying, like you know, uh -huh. yeah. So we have you know approval which needs to go to the sales leader, and then we have our approval that needs to go to the legal team as well. Huh. So we can run them parallelly. It's not it should not be like that. It should go first to sales team, then to legal team. We can run them parallelly. You do not want to lose for uh, you do not want to lose 14 days, right? Yeah. You, you just want everything to be done faster in order to reduce the sales cycle. And for that, uh, you just run run it run it parallelly through different people. You do not have step by step approvals, right? And until unless the sales manager is not going to approve it, uh, it will not go to legal team. It is going to have a lot of time uh, wastage, or it is going to, I mean, yeah, it is going to cause a lot of, uh, I mean, waste of time. Yeah. So hence, if you do not want that, you can run them parallelly. 
All right, let's go to the next one. Auto renewal and amendment. A lot of time, what happens with B two B sales is uh, they have renewals, and uh, in the renewals they have amendment as well. So all of that process is, uh, is something that can also be taken care of uh, very easily with Salesforce CPQ. How? Uh, you you can just see how <laughs> later on. Then comes split order. Uh, so whenever you place a particular order, the order can be splitted into different fulfillments, right? So if you want uh, the order, some items from the order to be shipped to X location and some orders of the item to be shipped to Y location, you can easily do that with Salesforce CPQ. Then comes order grouping. I, I, am I correct, right? Yeah. And then comes order grouping. Uh, so what that means is uh, for different kind of customer segments. Uh, or for different kind of product categories, you can group the different orders and accordingly streamline the order processing for it, right? Uh, because my, you might be selling a, a rack that needs to be fulfilled a different way. And on the other hand, you might be selling a small chip that needs, uh, needs to be fulfilled a different way. So you can set, off, set all of those groupings and get it fulfilled accordingly. Uh, right? Yeah, just to add on to that. So like, you know, you may have a code where you have, you know, quoted them 10 products, but out of those 10 products, they want three products to be delivered this month next five products to be delivered a quarter later so we can create different different orders for them so that the fulfillment team should know like okay we need to fulfill this order now and then we need to fulfill this order three months later so we can do that with order grouping all right uh, then comes multi-dimensional coating what exactly is that so for multi-dimensional coating i would like to you know uh, take the example which is on the next slide so multi-dimensional coating is for subscription based products where we are kind of you know selling a particular service or a product over a duration Okay, it can be done for over a duration, it can be done based on uh, usage, volume, different different scenarios, but we have taken an example where we are selling it for a certain duration. So let's say we are selling a product and we are selling it. So we want the product to be, you know, uh, sold at a price of $1,000 in year first, then we want it to be sold for some discount in the next year and then some additional discount in the next year, because that would allow the customers to be able to, you know, uh, get that feeling like you know we are doing sustainable we are kind of you know we are we have been using this particular product on a sustainable uh, i would say you know on a regular basis we should get additional discount so we can configure that so instead of saying we are going to give you this product for 2700 what we are doing is we are saying for the first year it is going to co uh, cost you thousand dollars but from the 13 month onward it's going to cost you a little bit less so we can do that with multi-dimensional coating got it uh, next is large code experience. So large code experience is when you have so many SKUs being, you know, uh, so many, I could sense that so many from your, I could also sense it, but yeah. <laughs> so we have, uh, when we have, you know, very large SKUs in a particular queue, what happens is it gets quite difficult to understand it, to read it. So we can enable large code experience that gives us the capability where the products are configured or kind of grouped in segments and then they are, can be viewed easily. The multi-dimensional coating products can be viewed in a different tab. So it gives you a very, you know, simplified view, which you can use to cute your customers. So that is large cute experience, which the CPQ provides, which is a really nice feature when you compare it with other tools that mm -hmm. provide CPQ. And then comes redlining, which works similarly like Grammarly <laughs> <laughs> for the code generation process of yours. Am I correct? So like with the customer being the grammar, <laughs> like, you know, the customer is kind of guiding you like, yeah, I don't want this. I want this. So we can do redlining using that and uh, it can, we can get it approved instead of, you know, keeping that conversation via email, we can keep it on the tool itself only where they can specify. We want the contract. We want the service agreement for six months, not just three months. So, so what you're trying to say is it's, a, it, it's, it's a Google docs for your customers as well as for your sales reps. Yeah where they can suggest the comments. Where they both can be collaborators. They both can be collaborators, all right.